RF Man here. Today I want to talk about a different topic. I spent a lot of time in the last several videos that I made talking about super heterodyne receivers. Uh, today I'm going to switch gears and go back to linear amplifiers. And today's topic is going to be on RF chokes or bias chokes to be more specific. And when we talk about an RF choke or bias choke, what are we really talking about? Well, in most amplifiers, and this is just a single stage MOSFET amplifier, okay, we have our VDD, which is our supply voltage, and we normally have some type of RF choke. So we're going to look at the RF choke and what the requirements are for bro broadband and VHF, so both high frequency and VHF frequencies. And what is the purpose? What is the job of the RF choke? Well, it's going to be used basically to conduct DC. So it provides a very, very low impedance for DC. Okay, typically it's just the resistance of the windings. So it's going to be in the milliohm range. Okay, but it also blocks RF. So as this transistor is operating, say that we're at 30 megahertz, for example, okay, we're going to have the RF signal here on the drain, okay, and we're applying it to this load, typically 50 ohms. So to prevent the RF from feeding back into the power supply, we use an RF choke to choke out that RF signal. So let's take a little closer look at that. Here's typical construction of an RF choke. Um, the type we use in, say, HF amplifiers would be some type of a toroid core and then a series of windings. So this is just a simplified diagram where we would have the core material, okay, and then we would have our number of windings and we'd be able to calculate what the impedance of this is or the inductive reactants okay and they come in various shapes you can use for example a bar like this or a round toroid like this one and we're going to talk specifically about the requirements for the RF choke. So this is the RF choke that I use on my LDMOS amplifiers. It's a one and a half inch toroid. It's the one I just showed. And I'm using material 43 with nine turns. So at nine turns, this gives me an inductance of 46 microhenries. Now, just a couple of comments before we explain how the choke works and why we use material 43 and why we're using nine turns, etc. Okay, um, this is just a simple diagram that shows the proper way to wind an RF choke. Okay, so this is the correct way where we have a gap in between the windings and we have a fair amount of spacing between each winding and these would be considered the incorrect way. The reason why is because the windings are very close and we could have capacitive coupling between the windings. Okay, and what that will do is add capacitance to the choke and give it a resonant frequency. Okay, and we, and we wanna basically design the choke so it doesn't have a very sharp resonant frequency, but has a very broad response. And we'll see that as we go forward on the nano VNA. So here's what the RF signal would look like without the choke. Okay, my boards operate at 50 volts. They use a BLF 188XR. So I'm running at 50 to 54 volts. And without that choke, I'm applying the 50 volts DC, but I'm going to have a lot of... RF ripple, okay, feeding back into the power supply. And in some cases, that ripple can be high enough to affect the power supply's operation or 
even damage the power supply. So what we do is we put this RF choke in line. I show that here, okay, to choke out the RF and to attenuate that ripple to a fairly low value. So it's not going to affect the power supply operation and it's not going to cause any damage. So typically, um, you want to have a minimum of 500 ohms. That's pretty much the design guideline for high frequency. Um, so we're using the formula for inductive reactants, right? Two times pi times frequency times inductance. Frequencies in hertz. Inductance is in Henry's. Okay, so the worst case would obviously be the lower frequency. I can see by the formula here, if I decrease the frequency, I decrease the inductive reactance. If I increase the frequency, I increase the inductive reactance. So here it is over the high frequency band. So worst case would be 1.8 megahertz, which is 160 meters. Okay, and we meet that minimum requirement of 508 ohms okay and that's it again for my choke that i'm using which is 46 microhenries and here of course at the higher frequency the impedance is much higher so we're not too concerned about that so it's just a simple explanation of what the minimum impedance should be for the choke and what the basic function of the choke is so how do we want the choke to respond well, for high frequency, we want a very broadbanded response, okay? Um, so we're going to look at that first. We don't want a narrow band, okay? Because then I'm not going to be attenuating the RF signal over the entire band, right? We have about 28 megahertz of bandwidth from 1.2 megahertz to 30 megahertz. So let's just round that off to 28. So you want a fair amount of attenuation over that entire band. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my uh, my choke that I'm using on my LD MOS boards and we can take a look at the response on the Nano DNA. Alright, so now I'm back. I'm using the Nano VNA, which you see there, to sweep the RF choke, which is here. And I'm using port 1 and port 2, so that's S11 and S21. And the way that works, from port 1, we basically send out a signal. And then port 2, we receive the signal, and we're able to measure how much attenuation we're seeing over a given frequency, right? Remember, the choke wants to choke out or attenuate the RF signal so it doesn't reach our power supply. So let's take a look at the curves on the Nano VNA. And I'm particularly interested in S11, which is our return loss or reflected power, and S21, which is the gain. So we see right now that the return loss is quite high, okay, and the gain is dropping off significantly. And what you see is it's very broadbanded. So my scan is starting at 2 megahertz, ending at 100 megahertz. The high frequency range is like 1.8 to 30 megahertz. So you can see on the low end here, I'm getting about minus 25 dB, which is excellent. Okay, and let's see at this point, this is 7 megahertz. I'm getting about minus 30 dB. And here we're about... 15 megahertz or so and getting minus 35 and then let's see how close we can get to 30 that's 30 megahertz and I'm getting about minus 37 to 38 dB so you can see the response is very broad banded over the entire high frequency range and that's exactly what we're looking for we're looking for a lot of attenuation over the 28 megahertz bandwidth, right, from 2 to 30. So we have quite a wide bandwidth, but we're getting quite a good amount of attenuation over that frequency range. And it, it continues um, go well past 30, okay, and then it starts to rise again. So that's what it should look like. It should be very broad-banded. 
and give us a good response and at least 25 dB or more would be considered a well-designed choke of a given frequency. So now let's go ahead and look at another choke that's used for the VHF band and let's compare the difference. So let me set that up and I'll be back. All right, so now I'm back and this is the choke that I use on my 1.25 meter board. So that's basically 220 to 225 megahertz or so. You can see it has a much narrower bandwidth than the HF choke. And let's take a look again at the curves on the Nano VNA, particularly S11. And you can see here that the response of this choke is much narrower. And, and that's okay for VHF because the bandwidth is much less and we're not too concerned about a broadbanded response. So let's just take a look here. This is about, just click around here. It's about 220 megahertz. I'm getting almost minus 50 dB, right? And then the bandwidth is fairly narrow. That's the 235, which is actually beyond the bandwidth. I'm getting about 50 dB. So you can see that this particular choke has a very narrow response. And the reason why is that there's a lot of capacitance between these windings. These windings are much closer together. So you have basically the inductance of the choke plus the winding capacitance, so the capacitance of the choke. And they would have basically forming a a parallel resonant circuit they would have a resonant frequency and in fact I have a video on this topic but right at this point is the resonant frequency of this choke okay it's about 231 so this choke responds very well for 1.25 meters with a much narrower bandwidth and greater attenuation and again this is the self-resonant frequency due to the inductance and the winding capacitance. So you have L and C. So for the high frequency choke, we said we want to keep the, the windings separated, right? So we don't have a lot of winding capacitance. So that's what you see there. But for a VHF choke or UHF choke, we do keep the windings close together and we have a lot of winding capacitance which gives us this sharper response and quite a bit of attenuation at 50 db minus 50 db so that's the difference in in the two chokes and in the design one is very broad banded one is narrow banded okay so now we're going to take a look at different materials and compare that and see how they okay so here i have two identical chokes Okay, one's material 61, the other is material 43. They both have 10 turns. So let's look at the response first of the material 61. This would have a lower inductive reactance because the material has a lower permeability. And let's scan that. I'm going to change this back to 100 megahertz so again more toward the high frequency band we're going to go from 2 to 30 and see how it responds okay that's correct so let's sweep that okay and you see again and we're concentrating on s11 here you see a very broad banded response Okay, from the low end, I'm getting about minus 10. I'd like to see that closer to minus 20 or 25 on the low end. And then you can see at around, let's say, 30 megahertz, we'll look at. Okay, I'm getting a little better than minus 32, 33. Okay, so remember that curve. Okay, and we'll go ahead now and remove 
the material 61 joke and we'll put in the material 43 all right and we'll sweep it again now remember where we are here low end minus 10 and here about minus 30 okay let's sweep the material 43 okay and you see at the low end you get a much better response with the higher permeability material of 43 okay low end doesn't change all that much um, 30 megahertz is almost minus 35 so so we have dramatic improvement on the low end and some improvement on on the high end over the high frequency response so this is why we use material 43 I had a lot of people question me about this and say no material 61 should be used and well yeah that's partially true um, but if you're looking for good broadband performance on the low end you can see material 43 at 160 meter 80 meter is, is going to perform much better for you and provide uh, more attenuation at those lower frequencies um, we don't really have to worry too much about core saturation here because it's only the RF ripple um, that, that's, that's a factor here that we're concerned with. So that's a, a brief demonstration um, of looking at an RF choke, looking at one design that's broadbanded and why it's broadbanded, looking at one that's more narrow banded and, and why we use the narrower band and then comparing material 61 and material 43 and looking at the difference in the responses. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that clarifies some, some questions that I've gotten over, I would say over the last couple of years um, and why we use material 43 and, and uh, why we space out the, the windings and uh, what the broadband performance should look like. So I hope that was helpful. Um, RF men.